Hi guys, welcome back to Belly Melon Farm. Um, today you probably noticed we're not at Belly Melon Farm, we're on the road. Um, so we are excited to be going and picking up something that is going to help us um, with our beginnings into more sustainable farming um, and kind of going down that road of um, regenerative farming. Yes, yeah, so we're really excited. Yeah, so we're um, heading down to Dannybrook today um, to pick up a, a Tawanfurt Multi 500. So uh, lots of you um, who use alternative fertilizers or even people who just actually want to be more sustainable in a regular farming system will know what the um, Tawanfurt's all about. So basically it is a sprayer that you can put um, lots of different pro products through. And one of the, the great things about it is you can put liquid fertilizers through it um, and even um, dissolve ureas and mag oxides, mag sulfates, that sort of thing can go through it. Um, you can even spread some small seeds with your mixes, so like chicory, plantain, red clover and that sort of thing. So uh, something I've been wanting to get for a long time but it's been out of, outside our price range but um, fairly recently they've uh, it, it included in their range the 500 which is a smaller one, um, only about a third of the price of the next one up so, and it fits our system perfectly I think. So. Um, yeah, we're really excited about getting getting into that. Um, we've been um, working very s just a little bit recently with a guy, Greg Barclay, who um, from Soil Connections does some amazing work around regenerative farming and including more varied pasture species in your farming system. And also he has a huge amount of knowledge around um, alternative fertilizers and some awesome liquid sea-based fertilizers. So we're um, looking forward to getting some more work done with him and his um, our goal is he's going to give us a bit more information and um, a bit more advice around what our system needs and, and where we can sort of make some changes to slowly make our system more regenerative. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to get on the road shortly, but when we do, we'll, once we get to Danny Luke, we'll show you a bit more of the tail and and how it works. Excited. Very cool. All right, let's go. Awesome. <laughs> So today is one of the coldest days we're supposed to get um, in New Zealand. So we woke up this morning and I think it was minus two here in Wanganui. Um, we, we don't get that cold at home. So I think when we looked at home, it was, was it like seven degrees? Yeah, yeah so, um, so we're just gonna check out and then we're gonna go grab some breakfast. Um, and yeah, then we're gonna get on the road to Dannyburg. Go along. 
along to some things to try and uh, to try and learn you know where to start um, that was probably the hardest bit kind of in hindsight thinking that um, over the last six years since we've owned the farm we've probably already made like a lot of um, steps towards regenerative farming anyway but like what was the next step Next step is, I suppose, incorporating some of those more diverse pastures and um, using some different fertilizers rather than just conventional chemical fertilizers. So, since we've owned the farm, we haven't put any capital fertilizer on, um, apart from very small amounts of urea, um, just when we had feed gaps. Um, and we've we've known about lots of different sort of seaweed or fish-based fertilizers um, that have been on the market, but there's so many of them, it's hard to know where to start. So um, that was, it's been a goal for a little while and yeah, recently we've attended a couple of really good um, events around regenerative farming um, held by the Heald family who farm um, regeneratively really well down in Northwood in um, New Zealand and um, through that we um, met Greg Barclay who runs Soil Connections um, and so yeah, he's going to be working with us like I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. um, and helping us achieve some of those goals of, of taking that next, next step. Mm -hmm. and I think it's really interesting too like uh, you know how many of the things that we're doing in the garden we're just kind of applying those to the farm in a way. Um, what I really like is that um, that we, we're not just going to jump into it like um, it's going to you know it's going to be like a, a long journey to try and um, you know get those multi-species pastures in um, you know we've got a large debt um, so it's not something that we can afford just to go out and regress the whole farm and also eventually take some of those um, outside inputs away so currently we feed prolic which is um, the byproduct made from cheese whey and we also feed a small amount of palm kernel um, to the cows and our um, goal eventually is to not have to feed that and to sort of be system one, uh, which in New Zealand dairy, uh, if you're not, not sort of aware of that, is basically growing 100% of your own feed. Um, but obviously, you know, we've got we've got debt, we've got a business we need to run which needs to be profitable in the meantime, so we can't just go, right, rip all that out and let's just go system one because I think we will fail pretty fast. So a big part of, I think, having Greg's help will be um, over the years slowly reducing that and at the same time building the farm up to the point where it's more resilient uh, in its soils and its pastures and, uh, and we can we can take that next step uh, when the time's right. Mm -hmm. The other thing um, that we're going to find a little bit a little bit more challenging is that we um, we own um, 51 effective hectares and we lease um, 35 hectares um, so you know the having the lease block also attached to the milking platform um, you know makes it a little a little bit more challenging um, as well when we're, when we're thinking of um, you know changing the pastures and things like that yeah yep yeah. uh, and, and how do you incorporate those areas so that you can still achieve your regenerative goals um, where sustainable farming goals but without spending a lot of money on land that you don't actually own mm -hmm. um, which is always the the, 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 yeah, the catch-22 with lease land um, we need it to make the farm you know a viable option at the moment um, we can make you can make quite good money from lease land but it's just how you look after it treat the land right but at the same
So we've um, just arrived in Dannybrook and just got out to stretch our legs a little bit. Um, so next we're going to go and find Metal Form, which is the place here in Dannybrook that sells the Toan Fert. Um, we don't know too much about the company, the company but um, from what we've read online it was uh, the Toan Fert was um, first made in 2009 and it's um, designed and manufactured here in Dannyburg, which is pretty cool. Mm, sold all around the world. Mm -hmm. So cool, we're just down here at the Toe and Foot um, manufacturing facility here in good old Dannyburg in New Zealand. Um, I'll let the guys from Toe and Foot introduce themselves, or metal, metal form, so. Yeah, I think it's, um, I'm Tim from Metal Form, and we call Danny Vic the centre of the universe, so <laughs> pretty special. Um, yeah, a little bit about Toan Furt. Um, it started about 15 years ago, just, um, and really our experience with it, or where it came from, was that we saw what was happening in the ag space um, from an aerial application point of view. Um, we developed a bucket for applying fine particle um, in the early 2000s. And really seeing that take off and the benefits of what the farmers are seeing is quite vertical. And foliar fur, um, we thought, well, why can not we not have a product that every farmer can own? So that was where Town Fit was born, having something that was on wheels, um, to tow it around, yep. um, with the opportunity to do foliar applied fur, fine particle, biological, so yep. yeah. not restricting farmers with what they want to put on. Yeah, no, that sounds great. And like you say, taking it out of just solely contractors' hands into on farm. Yep. Yeah. And we've learned a lot of things along the way. Um, it really started off with foliar in, um, but obviously that's only a very small part of what the opportunity is with yep. it. So, you know, putting seeds on, or quite often stimulants, yep. and other products as well. It's what we've learned in the last 10 years. Yeah, and the main, main idea behind foliar is it's a lot more efficient as an application because the plant is able to take it up a lot easier. That's right, yep. So yeah. it's certainly not science that we've um, created, but uh, a lot of research done around the world. Um, and yes, the uh, ability of the plant to take it straight up yep. through the leaf rather than it doing a big conversion process through the soil. Yeah, and especially if you consider like solid <coughs> fertilizers, you're not waiting for rain to first wash that into the soil and then be taken up by the roots and That's finally right. by the plant, eh? So, yeah. Yep. Oh, very cool. Yep. No, I think it's something that we've been looking for, looking at for a long time, and I think the, the 500 perfectly fits our needs at this stage. So, Perfect. you know, the, the, the thousand looks great, but I sort of was saying to um, some other people, like I, I can see myself using it behind the cows. You know, yeah. if, as you get the cows in every day, do one or two paddocks. I, I sort of we don't have staff, so I probably can't find time to sit in a tractor all day anyway. Yeah. So yeah, Sense. I think the smaller one works well. I think. Yeah, mm. the key thing to following the cows just with foliar, make sure that. <clears throat> there's a little bit of leaf cover. Yep. Um, okay. So if you can wait a few days after the cows leave, yep. um, that sort of gets the best benefit out of it as okay. well. Okay. And that just helps with absorption better and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Awesome. So this is number one. Oh, right. That's cool. That prototype we built. Just little things like using stainless fittings and all that too, you know, oh. just stuff that makes sense. Stuff that's not going to snap off like a plastic fitting or... And to be honest, at the beginning we started with plastic valves yep. and it works great on day one. Yep. But on day ten, yeah. <laughs> it's not so great. And I suppose it probably adds a tiny bit more expense, doesn't it? But it's getting a product that lasts. Well, so the first thing to remember with this machine is that to not run the pump when the pump's empty. Okay. That doesn't mean you can run it when the tank's empty, as long as the pump's not empty. Right. So the pump will never drain itself, as in when you finish spraying, it will never completely empty this. Yep. The only way the pump is, can be emptied is by cleaning it by doing that. Right. So that's like meaning it's always basically self-primed. It's always primed as long as you haven't drained it completely at a cleaning point. Yep. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, so the first job to do with the machine is obviously do your calculation on the app yep. and that will figure out how much water to have in it. So let's say we've done a calc. So as we 
actually up the front here there's literally two valves it's pretty straightforward pretty obvious that one diverts the spray or sorry pumps it down to the spray nozzle it doesn't mean it'll start spraying right uh, start spraying is on the right pull on the top yep. okay cool but generally when we're mixing fur just leave that off completely right agitator so we just turn that on fully on cool <clears throat> that agitator valve at least a little bit open even Correct. yeah so you find that 20 um, psi either through the, the valve or engine rpm correct so yep. a mixture of both cool there's a little indents in the valve so generally you try and find it where it either sits oh yeah cool there or there yeah <coughs> oh, that's awesome very cool i think you've shown that uh, and when you want to empty to empty the tank completely it's often better to have that just completely off Yep. If you don't need mixing or just when you get near the end it's supposed to jump off your bike, turn that completely off just so it's not pushing all the product away from the suction port. Right, yep. Cool. Cool. So you get that blast of it out. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Easy. Yep. Maybe I should, should better mess that up too much. <laughs> Hopefully not. Okay. Famous last words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, very cool. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. And while we're here, we'll uh, just have a look at some of the other machines and yep. the rest of your range. Okay. Joe will take you for a wander on that, if you do. Yeah, thanks John. <laughs> I'll go and get a full one. Okay. <coughs> we'll start with, I'll well, start with the big one. Uh, it's about 4,000. Holds 4,000 litres, but um, we'll get up to do a lot more than that in tonnage. So 4,000, we've got 4 tonne of lime flour with 2 tonne of water. Okay. And we'll suspend that. Yep. Quite high ratio. Yep. Um, obviously puts about six ton in the tank. Need a bit of pulling power for it. Um, yeah, it's basically the exact same system, just at a bigger scale with a lot more plumbing and boom recirculation and things like that. Yep. Um, 
hydraulically driven, not from PTO. Yeah, so we've got both options, um, PTO or hydraulic. Yep. Some people prefer the um, hydraulic, just it's less moving parts and a bit safer. Yep. Um, it just depends on the how much yeah, it depends on the customer and the, what track is supplying it. Um, they don't take a, a lot of oil flow, but um, yeah, once you add in a, a crane like the 2800 here has on it, um, do start to use up a few of your supports. Right. This is a 2800. Often goes to farms that are a bit steeper. Sorry, on the 4000 you can cover between, depending on the rate of application you're using, about 20 to 40 hectares in a load. It's obviously a bit smaller, chosen by people with steeper country on the sheep and beef farms and things like that. Right, yeah. It's a lot of central gravity a bit and stuff. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the tank sits a lot, a lot lower in the chassis of the machine here in the cradle. So I've got the crane option on it. The other option for the 500, um, so it comes with the suction kit and the electric um, actuation for the nozzles on and off. Um, that's just done by a remote there. That's such um, kit you can sort of drop that into a water trough or something and yeah. suck out of the end. Yeah. 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 So it just clicks on here. I get um, you just fill up from a water pump. Uh, sorry, water trough or um, yeah, anything around your water pump. Yeah. It's one of the features I really like about it actually. You can put your it's right. The three point linkage model, the 1200. These and the pods, oh, it's on every farm really. Um, quite handy for horticulture and getting over crops and not having a trail or anything behind and going over uh, vegetables and things like that. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. right, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so we do sell a few of these to, uh, with the hort, hort booms on them, which um, are an example. But just to kind of what's on that demo 500 with little spoons that spray out to the side where you can get hit the roots or aim them up and get under the trees. Okay, yep. Uh, it's the core product really. It started off as an 800 litre and evolved into a thousand. Um, it's a multi 1000. This is a, a petrol run one. So these do come in a hydraulic, um, with a hydraulic motor as well. Okay. Um, but you can use this for piney ute as well as a tractor. So the hydraulic supply, yep. um, but you can just yeah, either use the coupling or flip that over and, and hook it onto your tractor.
so uh, lovely day in Vic today. We're all loaded up, ready to go home. Um, yeah, just want to say a big, big thanks to Tim and Joel for taking the time to show us um, through their range of products, show us how the machine works, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to getting it home and uh, using it. Awesome. So yeah, we'll share, um, when we get home and start using it, we'll share some videos um, about that as well. So we're really excited um, to get into it. Um, so yeah, that's all for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Thanks.